Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you. Thanks to all of you. That Every piece of you from head to toe. Maybe you're Carmine Bailey. Maybe you're Vince Power. Maybe you're Rodrigo Smith Zapata. Ooh. Or maybe you're Alo Adam L. Thank you for supporting the show. On this episode of DTNS, Bose's stylish new earbuds, OpenAI closes up with uh, text to video, and Patrick Norton helps you understand mask keys. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, February 16th, 2024. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. Somewhere in the county, I'm Patrick Norton. <laughs> Drawing the top tech stories in Cleveland, I'm Len Peralta. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Uh, I almost said 2023 for the first time. Like, I had to catch myself. It was written right and everything. I just, you know, oh. it was I one mean, of those. I mean, it's only I February. Just... Yeah. yeah. You got, you got another took, Sometimes these things happen. It, yeah, it took till February for that to happen. Also, you're in the county? You're not in the city of St. Louis? I am at a secret location. Wow. It is on my home. Fancy out in the county. Mm. Mm. Uh, it is not on a private road, Tom. It is not that fancy. It is not, not that, that fancy right. part of the county. Got it. Got it. Still. People still in St. Fancy. Louis are laughing really hard right now, and everybody else is going, huh. Yeah. <laughs> what high school did you go to? Uh, Epic has received its Apple developer account in the EU and will begin working on making an Epic game store for iOS there. They say they should have it done by the end of the year. And now the rest of the quick hits. On Wednesday's show, Scott Johnson shared his thoughts on the future of Xbox ahead of Microsoft's official announcement. Thursday, right before DTNS recorded, Microsoft did announce four Xbox exclusive games will come to non-Xbox platforms. Head of Xbox Phil Spencer ruled out Starfield and Indiana Jones, however, and said all four titles are more than a year old. Spencer also said Microsoft is still working on a next console, including different kinds of hardware, which goes along with hints that Spencer has been dropping about the possibility of a handheld. And Microsoft also announced Game Pass now has 34 million subscribers. That's up 36% since the last time it released numbers two years ago. When Jake Moffat booked a flight from Vancouver to Toronto in 2022 to go to his grandmother's funeral, he asked Air Canada's chatbot if there were bereavement fares, discounts for people flying to funerals. The chatbot said yes, indeed, Air Canada offered reduced bereavement fares, and he could even get a refund if he had already booked a flight with a full fare, as long as he told Air Canada about it within 90 days of his travel. And then it linked to the bereavement policy. Now, Moffat didn't click that link, which led to a page that would have told him that Air Canada did not offer bereavement fares for completed travel. Moffat, however, said, hey, the chat pod told me it did, took a screenshot, sent it to Air Canada. Air Canada wouldn't give him the money, so he sued for deception. And Air Canada tried to argue that the chat bot was, and I quote, a separate legal entity that is responsible for its own actions. <laughs> Can't blame him for trying. Uh, the game. civil the civil resolution tribunal of Canada did not buy that argument. Said no, it's your chatbot. It's on your website. You're responsible for it, uh, and ordered Air Canada to pay Moff at eight hundred twelve dollars, which was the difference between what he paid and the reduced bereavement fare. Uh, thanks to Reed Fischler for tipping me off to this story. Search lab users in the U.S. can try something called Talk to a Live Representative in the Google app for iOS and Android and desktop Chrome. So when you search for a customer service number, you might see request for call as a button that you could click. If you click it, Google will ask a few questions about what you're calling about, what's your number, then it will call the customer support line for you, navigate some phone trees, then text you as it makes progress. And when you're off hold, it will call you so that you could talk to that live representative. Supported businesses include airlines, phone companies, retail, insurance, and various services like shipping companies, waste management, Zelle, and Instacart. That's cool. I like that. That's like a step up from the like, we'll call you back and your place in line because you yeah. don't even have to call and get in line. Uh, the US FBI reports it has taken down a botnet that had infected Ubiquiti's Edge OS routers with the Mood, <laughs> Mubot uh, malware used for spear phishing and credential stuffing attacks. The small office and home office users of the routers were not the targets, so it didn't compromise their information. It just used their routers to launch attacks on government, military, and 
Homeland Security organizations. With court approval, FBI agents remotely accessed the infected routers and used Mubot to delete stolen and malicious data, and then deleted Mubot and blocked remote access. The actions did not disrupt the router's legitimate functionality or access user data. Uh, this is, of course, part of the cat and mouse game between criminals and law enforcement. Uh, you take one botnet down, another one's going to pop up somewhere, right? In an attempt to break that cycle, Google announced an AI cyber defense initiative ahead of the Munich Security Conference starting now, Friday. Bloomberg sources say that Apple has ramped up development of an AI-powered code completion tool that, similar to Microsoft's GitHub Copilot, expanding internal testing of a new generative AI feature set for its Xcode programming software. Apple reportedly plans to release them to third-party developers this year. And similarly to Microsoft's GitHub Copilot, the programming tool Apple is working on applies a large language model to predict and then complete strings of code and potentially even write code to test apps. Ooh, the drumbeat continues of, of Apple's uh, AI plans. Well, Bose is selling some new earbuds that you might have seen in a headline or two or a picture here and there. Uh, they're turning heads because they sit outside of the ear canal instead of trying to be in your ear like most earbuds. Uh, that means they don't have noise canceling, something people always think of with Bose. But mm. some people want always to be able to hear their surroundings, but also hear their music at a reasonable volume. If you just set your AirPods outside your ear, the volume's not going to be good enough. So these are designed to, to be able to let you hear the world around you, but also have volume so that you can understand what your audio is saying to you. The Bose Ultra Open Earbuds do that. They're also lightweight, so they're better for somebody who needs to wear earbuds for a long time. Uh, you can wear them for four, five, six hours. Bose products, however, can be divisive. And I've noticed these being praised by some of the usual skeptics out there. Uh, Patrick, Bose took its open audio framework uh, from its ill-fated Bose frames and put it in the earbuds and then tried to make them look kind of like jewelry. Uh, how does this form factor work for you? Okay, so I have not had a chance to try them myself, but folks who have say they are actually really comfortable once you figure out how to strap them to your ears because they kind of clip on like giant earrings. Um, like most open earbuds, there's not a lot of bass. So if you need bass in your life, open earbuds are probably not a thing for you. Um, the design on these is particularly novel, especially compared to the other offerings out there. Um, the idea of open earbuds is not really new just maybe more new to to to, to Bose, um, you know. Uh open earbuds are a thing especially for runners um outdoorsy folks sony shocks j labs clear soundcore one more and many many others are all in this space um these are getting a lot of attention because they're a bose product therefore they must be super and amazing or they are horrendous trash and as tom pointed out earlier there's a lot of people who just immediately hear bose and have a reaction one way or the other <laughs> Well, so. so the audio that auto adjusts, I know, is something that Bose is touting here. So if you're in, I don't know, a place that's really loud, but, you know, a, a, a lively coffee shop, for example, versus a <laughs> library, it's supposed to adjust the audio accordingly. I mean, my AirPods do that with adaptive, you know, sound uh, to to a point, right? Uh, yeah. You know, I, I, I have I have some options here, but are these supposed to work better? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because one of the things Bose is touting, uh, another thing Bose is touting, I should say, is like the immersive audio. And people are like, eh, it's a little bigger. Personally, I'd rather have pure audio. It's, you know, the audio is definitely going to adjust, but they're not going to be loud enough to deal with a really cranky commuter bus. You know, I can think of a, a particular bus that I used to take in and out of Oakland uh, or super loud city streets. Um, mostly, I think these are for people who want to, you know, hear a car before they get run over or the baby fussing in the next room and find, you know, there's a lot of earbuds that will allow you to hear things from outside. But, you know, a lot of that sort of like hear the outside world setting on your earbuds takes it from a microphone, amplifies it in a weird way, and then stuffs it in on top of your music in a way that I personally find awful and distracting and not a very good listen to the outside um so i think that's why open earbuds are so popular with so many people because it's it's a more natural layering of audio if you can call having little ears strapped or little speakers strapped to your ears sounding natural but honestly 
it can be really cool if you're into it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and obviously these things aren't going to have the base that you would have with in-ear earbuds. Uh, as I mentioned, no noise canceling. Uh, also, they don't give you a wireless charging case. Uh, you have to buy that separately. But they are more stable uh, and more comfortable for long-term wear. So, so Patrick, uh, are they worth the $299 price? To me, not so much. <laughs> to open ear folks who are looking for the bestest in comfort, maybe. Uh, that's one of the things that pretty much all the reviews have have called out, that these are much more comfortable than they expected. Um, you know, $299 is a lot of money for, you know, for most people for earbuds or for open earbuds. Um you know, there are a lot of options out there. You know, people who are Bose enthusiasts, people who really like the comfort factor, they're going to be all over these. Otherwise, I think they sound very expensive for what they are compared yeah, to Yeah, I think the comfort there. part of this is 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 the real selling point. I, mm -hmm. I have, you know, I'm wearing over-the-ear headphones for our show because that's just what feels comfortable for me yeah. doing the show. When I'm out and about... I sometimes use my noise canceling option on my AirPods, but often, especially if I'm walking around, you know, yes, in traffic, especially at night, I want to hear the world around me. So pass through is really important, but I still, uh, you know, if somebody were to come up to me and ask a question, I still instinctively pull one of them out of my sure. ear because I'm trying to hear as best as possible. This feels like maybe, maybe it's a natural middle ground. Yeah, I mean, also, I think pulling the pulling the earbud out is a sign of respect. Like, just because I can hear you, it's just you know, when somebody's talking to me with their ear, you know, their headphones on or their earbuds in. Um, I mean, you know, one, I'm gonna say something that's gonna make certain people in the audience laugh really hard. Um, you know, my son has finally figured out. My oldest son has finally figured out. He doesn't have to talk real loud just because he's wearing headphones. Um, and <laughs> then, sort of, the next step is him was him realizing also that if you pull the headphone off and look at someone, they understand that you're paying attention to them. Uh, and I, I think that's just a sign of respect. Um, you know, I but also I don't, pull, I don't pull my earring out. These these are like earrings, right? Keep telling your yourself. earring isn't in your, you know, ear canal. Good your point. earring yeah. isn't singing. A this isn't in my ear canal it's either. It's just hanging earring. outside of it. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. that's the point I'm making about the in-ear earbuds. Even if you can hear the world around you pretty well. I yeah. think, you know, a lot uh -huh. of us still kind of go like, nah, let me, let me, let me hear even yeah. better. But I think that's polite too. And also, I think it also hears point. better because I, I find the pass through audio sort of like, it just, I, I find it, even on some high end devices, I find it really meh at best. I also will flat out say that, for example, I will not ride in the city or almost anywhere, period, with earbuds in that the idea of, 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 you know, it just it terrifies me not being able to hear the you know the world around me uh, i don't even like snowboarding with earbuds in so that may be one of my peculiarities but the open ear devices to me are much more natural in the way that they actually uh you know let you hear real sounds not process sounds coming through you know the the dsp and the amplifiers inside your tiny little earbuds well, on Thursday's show, we told you about OpenAI announcing a new text-to-video research project called Sora, only for now available to certain creators and security experts who are red teaming it for safety vulnerabilities, basically trying to make it do bad things so that they can say, hey, company, fix this before <laughs> the general public gets access. Good Sora plan. uses a version of the diffusion model used by Dolly and GPT-4, generates a video by starting off with one that is more or less just a bunch of static transforms it to make a finished product, which is uh, surprising and delighting many people out there and also terrifying others. It can reportedly produce up to 60 second video clips. People with access are having a real fun time sharing examples online. I'm having a fun time watching these examples with mostly incredible videos. Some examples though, of it not working exactly perfectly. You know, you've got you've got the same old, hey, people's hands look weird, or hey, those those people, you know, walking down that path in Kyoto would have run into the fence eventually, but the video cut off. Little things like that. OpenAI researchers posted a Sora technical paper on Thursday evening titled Video Generation Models as World Simulators, noting that Sora can generate videos of an arbitrary resolution and aspect ratio up to 1080p 
and perform a range of image and video editing tasks, looping videos, for example, changing the background in a video that already exists. So it can also simulate digital worlds. This one's interesting. For example, a prompt containing the word Minecraft had Sora render a pretty convincing looking Minecraft like HUD in game. Yeah, I feel like these are are very clearly going to have pretty close to the same evaluation as we've had of all these other tools like ChatGPT, which is very mm -hmm. impressive uh, when you first see them. Probably not as scary as some people are worried they will be. And then uh, useful for, for specific things, like if you're a video game developer and you want to create a, a Minecraft-like uh, world, this can speed that up for you for sure there might be some editing i could see some descript like stuff where, where descript does for audio uh that this could do for video uh, overall uh the only thing i'm really disappointed about is the fact that open ai is releasing this and telling us about it but keeping it the most restricted of any of its products that it has talked about publicly so far which is the opposite direction that that google has been going with open ai is making it more restricted every time they talk about something google is making their products more open every time they talk about something uh remember google had lots of stuff that they just didn't tell the public about for a long time or only put in academic settings right. and now you're seeing gemini 1.5 is uh, available for enterprise widely et cetera, et cetera. So it's interesting to see open AI close up as uh, Google starts to open up and they're, they're starting to meet in the middle now. Is, is that part of a reaction to, to what happened with open AI being released and all the weird things people sure. did? Sure. Yeah. That, that's why Google opened up for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I saw a bunch of these videos earlier today. A friend of mine sent them to me and it was interesting watching people argue about how these look very similar to other videos and, you know, that the learning pool is very small. Um, but the thing that kind of blew my mind was I was watching some of these and they're so realistic. Um, and the this acts perfect if you're watching the video stream right now. I was laughing because the truck looks good and the background looks good, but the dirt coming off the tires is completely wrong, having spent hundreds of hours following, you know, desert vehicles spraying dust like that. But the crocheted helmet that, you know, people watching on the video saw at the beginning of this segment looked fantastically <laughs> real along with the face of the yarn astronaut person uh, that was wearing it. And it's it's it it is really odd what ai doesn't do well the waves look pretty good crashing on the beach the dust coming off the tires not so much and and part of me is like what is it with the fingers <laughs> why are they so hard to render <laughs> yeah there yeah. there are other examples of you know somebody takes a bite out of a burger but then the burger doesn't have the bite marks afterwards. Yeah. you know little kind of physics stuff that if you're not paying super close attention, maybe you could be fooled. And I think that's what scares everybody is, we're going to be fooled. Well, okay, so there there are several things that people are worried about. Creative folks These say, things are awful, and also they're so good, they'll fool all of us. Yeah. Right, yeah. It's like you've got you've got the very warranted uh, fear from people saying, oh, gosh, this is my job. What's, you know, what's my job going to look like in another year? You know, this is all happening so fast. And then you've got the folks saying, like, yeah, we're going to, you know – it, it, there's there was a Bloomberg uh, article that made the rounds today of you know we're we're in a an election year and you know when when we, it starts to get to you know August September are we going to have some um, Sora generated videos that are going to uh, fool people that um, that circulate online I mean the answer is yes they will uh, and so it kind of turns into this is awesome it's amazing. And it's scary because we don't know what it's going to do yet. I mean, I, 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 and by the way, like none of the videos that I've even seen are, are a full minute, but even if they are 60 seconds long, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, where do they go? Where do they go to, to so that they um, fool me and terrify me? I don't, I don't know yet. I don't know how this is super bad. It's just that I think it's, it's, it works so well that people instinctively want to be afraid. I don't know if Parmi Olsen is being paid by Google or not, but he should be, uh, because what he's doing is saying, oh, OpenAI gave us no timeline on when they're going to release this to actual people, but I'm still worried, uh, which is going to push OpenAI to keep things even more restricted, which is exactly what Google should want, is OpenAI to not release its stuff uh, as widely as it used to, because that's how ChatGPT got so popular, is they just put it out there in the world. So it's, it's interesting to watch all of that take place.
Uh, another thing that's interesting to watch, at least I hope for you, is Tom's Top 5 on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Daily Tech News Show. I break down five things you need to know about technology. These are quick, 60 seconds, and I will tell you about the top five home computers that had a second chance at success as video game consoles. Top five home computers given a second life as video game consoles. Watch it right now at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, Diatines Picks on Instagram, or youtube.com slash Daily Tech News Show. Wired's Matt Burgess uh, wrote up an article titled, I Stopped Using Passwords. It's Great and a total mess. Uh, and it uh, talks about him living with just pass keys. He, he tried to never use a password uh, to access his accounts. Just pass keys uh, said they're more secure. Uh, they are quicker, but pass keys front end implementation still a work in progress. Uh, he gives a couple of examples. One is Bitwarden's web browser extension supports pass keys, but the mobile app doesn't. Uh, in another instance, Burgess had to update his operating system to one that supports pass keys, which stalled his PayPal <laughs> pass key process. Uh, Burgess said that once you have a trusted device like a phone or a YubiKey or your browser uh, as your pass key authenticator, you might just want to stick with that one. Uh, it can be easy to have pass keys in multiple locations and that can add to your own conf confusion it is one of the benefits though is you can have pass keys in multiple locations uh patrick you've been using pass keys more what's your experience been uh and and do you have any tips and recommendations on folks who are starting to use these oh my goodness um it's been yeah okay let me flat out say captain you know it, it's it's a toss-up right whether in any given day roger or i are more cynical um you know, and, and I will, I will say like, <laughs> I, this, you know, I started hearing about this about a year ago. Um, the promise is glorious, right? There's the Google's words, pass keys are an easier and more secure alternative to passwords. They let you sign in with just your fingerprint, face scan, or screen lock. Now these are Google's words, not mine, but the reality is, is, is it's actually, I mean, it's, it is delightful and weird to see Apple and Google. Microsoft and Apple, Amazon and Apple, one password and Dashlane and LastPass all working to move us all to a land where people aren't 80 kinds of awful about securing their accounts, right? Like, you know, one of the stats that's been thrown up is 60% of, of all, uh, you know, I'll call it cyber crime since I don't want to say hacking, uh, you know, is, is related to phishing attacks and passwords uh, and stealing passwords. Um, you know, so the idea of making it easier to secure your passwords, easier to manage having good password hygiene is fantastic. And also, I'm still just delighted with Apple cooperating with Microsoft and the Google. Um, it's because it's just so weird to see these 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 organizations working together uh, to make my life better or the life of the security professionals at your company better. Um you know, I started thinking about it as I started playing around with this stuff. Um, to some degree, Burgess uh, and everybody else dealing with this is having a classic tech evolution migration problem. Stuff sucks a lot until it sucks less, and then it sucks less, and then you haven't thought about it. you. Then you 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 have a problem, and it's like I haven't really had a problem with this in a year and a half, right? This is something we've been through with like every iteration of every new technology. Um, folks adapting pass keys in early 2023 were having much worse experiences than Burgess was now. Um, um, should you be moving to a passkey? That's kind of a, a big maybe, uh, especially for a hip, hoopy audience that knows where their towels are, like the DTNS audience. Um, if you have a good, you know, if you have good password hygiene and you use a password manager, passkeys are an alternative. They may be a more secure alternative, but you're already way ahead of the curve because you have good passwords and good password hygiene. Um, and you know, and much like working, or I should say, moving from one password manager to a new one. The old one I'm thinking of shall remain nameless, lest Tom give me his disappointed face for calling someone out in a rude fashion. Um, it's kind of a pain. Um, <laughs> I had to uh, because hundreds of passwords. I, I It was funny because I, I was trying to figure out how many passwords I have. And I was scrolling through my password manager trying to count. And I got to like 100 and something before I got to the B's. I might be able to kill 20 or 30% of those because I no longer have that account because the website doesn't exist anymore. But if you've been doing this for a while, you may have a ridiculous number of passwords and maybe it's time to start getting rid of the old ones. Um, but for the, the, the biggest things pass keys are trying to fix, you know, for all of these companies and for all of the companies, and it, it's a crazy list of companies that are working on this. Um, people who share passwords across multiple accounts, people who never change their passwords, um, you know, 
these are the people who really should be considering moving to a passkey system. Um, they are very resistant to phishing. They are not phishing proof, right? If you get a clever attack that kind of convinces you to type into a password instead of using your passkey, uh, you're phished, right? Uh, you know, not to sound obvious, but don't do that. These, uh, you know, nobody I've talked to in the serious security side of things uh, has heard of uh, either either nobody's talking or nobody's heard of any remotely successful attempts to crack these systems. People are just starting to dig into them. Um, but every security professional I've talked to is all for people doing a better job sucking less at passwords. Uh, and this really, the whole passkey system sounds way easier to manage than a traditional password manager for a lot of folks. So that's, that's kind of where my head yeah. is at on this. Um, I'm experimenting with it because this actually seems smart and because I'm trying to get my kids to be, you know, more password forward, <laughs> password friendly, yeah. password awesome. Um, you know, and I'm also going to say this because I'm captain backup. Uh, two is one, one is none to abuse a phrase. Figure out your plan for if, you know, what happens if you drop your phone into the Mississippi or throw your security out in the garbage before you need it. Um, you know, this is not like, you know, locking your, your Bitcoin wallet uh, and then leaving it in a landfill. But it is one of those things where work out your plan or your concept before you're trapped in a corner trying to get the last plane. You know what I mean? Like, just, just do it's your It's one of the reasons plan. you might want to keep pass keys on more than one device, uh, yeah. even though Burgess says it's easier to keep them on one device. Also, it's a reason why you might want to give a secure email when you sign up for a pass key, because that's a way to reset your pass right. key. And if you don't, if you opt not to give them that email, then you're not going to have that avenue of recovery. And, and as to phishing, I, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I, I I do want to make it clear to folks, pass keys are phishing proof. But if a system doesn't use only pass keys, you right. can still get fished. And that's what Patrick was pointing out is like, if you've still got a password as a backup, well, you can still get fished for that password until yeah. until sites get rid of the password backup option altogether, uh, which is probably not going to happen for a lot of them because that's the other way to do a backup. <laughs> There's all uh, those people. Out yeah. there just using their then password. you're going to lose that 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 pass key yeah. advantage but um yeah we have an episode of know a little more if you if you search for know a little more nice. about pass keys out there uh it talks a little more about, about the details of how this all works if you have questions uh about it but you know the short version is uh these are stored on your device not in the cloud so they can't be breached uh and you don't have to remember what they are but you also don't have to remember a master password for a password manager. So they are more secure than passwords in, in those two ways specifically. All right, let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. Norm weighed in on a conversation we had with Justin Robert Young yesterday about social networks hurting kids. This was in response to New York City going after some of the social networks saying, you're hurting kids. Uh, Norm said, I just don't understand the problem. Keep your kids off the phones and tablets. Parents, parent. Put limits on their time on social media. Find out what they're doing. I regularly check out what my kids' history is to update things. Now, Norm was not the only person who wrote in. In fact, we got uh, some real nice emails from some of you, and thank you for those, saying, great conversation. Uh, I think this this just hits a nerve for a lot of people, uh, especially parents, um, trying to figure out how we navigate this world. Norm might be <laughs> over oversimplifying the, <laughs> the issues, uh, depending on your household. But yeah, I, I think that's it's certainly a good place to start. Yeah, no, we, we we had a lot of people who were were very complimentary uh, about Good Day Internet yesterday, leaving uh, comments on our Patreon, and and really really enjoyed that that extended conversation. So thanks to everybody for for writing in on that. Patrick, do you side with Norm on this as a as a father? I did not hear the conversation yesterday. <laughs> I'm very embarrassed to admit that in front of everyone. Um, I. You know, I. It's all right. <laughs> no, it's funny, right? All all of the computers in the house are in an open space, um, so that we can kind of keep tabs on what the kids are doing uh, on their computers. And of course, I can do super tech dad stuff and keep an eye on what's going over their machines. Uh, I also find that keeping kids off the phones and tablets gets harder and harder as they get older and older, and phones become a normal tool for communications with their friends. Mm -hmm. But. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how old Justin Robert Young's kids are, uh, but well, he you know. doesn't have kids. Rob Dumwood, um, co-host uh, yesterday, uh, does um, teenage and and a little bit older. But 
uh, yeah, our, our main, the conversation we were having, we were having, and we didn't all have one single point, you know, to, to give to anybody. It was more of a, your mileage may vary. And, uh, you know, (laughs) you know, if somebody's TikTok for you feed has a bunch of videos that end up making the kid feel like garbage, well, that's just not good. So yeah, I mean, I, I short notice like do social network hurt kids? Absolutely. Uh, am I grateful that my kids basically participate on no social networks and have no interest in them? And my teenager is aggressively against them. I am very thankful for that. Uh, have I witnessed you know the emotional destruction of children through social media secondhand from friends? Um, yeah, which is you know never underestimate the power of a generation to have backlash against the generation in front of it uh, to change attitudes and behaviors. Uh, Let's talk to my generation, Len Peralta. Len (laughs) has been illustrating today's show. Uh, Len, fellow Gen Xer, what have you drawn for us today? You know, uh, this week we just celebrated Fat Tuesday. I don't know if anybody has celebrated Fat Mm -hmm. Tuesday, but, you know, I don't know what the big deal about Paskies are. I am a big, uh, you know, I think they're delicious, these Paskies. (laughs) Um, I, I think you may be mishearing. We were talking about pass key. Oh, the, oh, the encrypted uh, okay. uh, token on your computer. That makes total sense. I was like, that that makes no sense when you're talking about the, the Polish donut that people usually eat on oh, the fat pass key. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. That's spelled exactly. differently. I was so confused. I was like, yeah, that's P A C Z. Ah, okay. 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 Yeah. okay. Yeah. I did enjoy some. Pass I keys. wouldn't yeah. try to log in uh, uh, securely with a Polish pas- pass key. Yeah, okay. That, yeah. That's well, it's just gonna gonna, it's gonna get into gonna get the keyboard. It's gonna be messy, and, mm-hmm. yeah, especially it's just, you know, it, it's, it's a great idea in long theory, long but networks. get it. Yeah. Uh, and if you wanna, <laughs> <laughs> if you wanna take a look at this, uh, or if you wanna get it, you can just go to my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Len, where you can back me at the DTNS lover level, and it is yours to have. Or you can go the old fashioned way, go to my online store at lenperaltostore.com, and maybe even uh, you know uh, ask me to draw something for you. I could use some uh, commissions. So there you go. Patrick Norton, always a pleasure. Let folks know where they can keep up with your latest work. Uh, you know, I'm I'm starting to expand beyond the Twitter, but that's a good place to start at Patrick Norton, uh, or head over to avxl.com or search for avxl on your favorite podcatcher. Patrons, stick around for the extended show. Good day, Internet. It's Friday, and Roger Chang has created another quiz in honor of Patrick Norton and his love for long, butt-numbing road trips. We've assembled <laughs> a quiz that will test his and your knowledge of popular automotive technology stick around please everyone you can catch the show live when we do it live monday through friday at 4 p.m eastern 2100 utc and you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live we are off monday for the u.s president's day holiday but back tuesday talking about the ipad pro versus ipad mini with lamar wilson joining us talk to you then This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer, Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer, Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker, Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and co-host, Rob Dunwood. Video producer and Twitch producer, Joe Kuntz. Technical producer, Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer, Dan Campos. Science correspondent, Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Social media producer and moderator, Zoe Detterding. Our mods, Beatmaster, W. Scottis One, BioCow, Captain Kipper, Steve Guadarrama, Paul Reese, Matthew J. Stevens, a.k.a. Gadget Virtuoso, and J.D. Galloway. Mod and video hosting by Dan Christensen. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A., Acast, and Len Peralta. Live art performed by Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Tatiana Matias. Patreon support from Tom McNeil. Contributors for this week's shows included Shannon Morse, Scott Johnson, Justin Robert Young, Chris Christensen, and Patrick Norton. And thanks to all our patrons who make the show possible. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>